may have to avoid talking to her right then, and then later on, it needs to be addressed, because it needs to be addressed, because he needs to know, because we're working on a project together, and, and you going off on me, I need to know why. And so, right then, depending on what she said, you may have to avoid it right now, and then until you calm down, until she comes down, and then address it. Now, this other stuff uh, <laughs> uh, about not returning complaints from, I mean, uh, not, uh, there are complaints from other departments about she's not doing her job as far as returning phone calls. That is management or her, a supervision uh, issue. So, because I'm, I'm, I'm her colleague, I can't, I, I can't reprimand her. So, that needs to be given to the supervisor and let the supervisor deal with that. But as far as her snapping at me, that needs to be addressed. And we noticed that she did it in front of other people. But I think the civility in this would be that we are going to do this uh, privately. And that's where the grace okay. comes in. We're not going to do it in front so, of everybody. So, I mean, correctly, it's basically. Y'all made this, y'all, it's not a question of should you address it. You know yeah. we should address it. Yeah. It's a question of address. when we should address it. Yeah. Based off of how the, severe. Yeah, how severe your love is. Based on you uh -huh. as a person, okay. how you can come to her in. Okay, and, and, and y'all also acknowledging that the flip side, not the flip side, furthermore in this situation that there might be a discrepancy that is out of the employee's hands and might need to be taken to manage. Right. Yes, right. And also one other thing I thought too is that in a case like this, it may be the only thing we have, like we said, we don't have the power. We, we shouldn't be the one that's yeah, okay. I have the power to do that. But, power but, but, but I think, the power, but I think that we uh, do. You ain't signing my checks, so I'm telling me like that. Exactly, and that's exactly <laughs> how that would be. But I thought that maybe coming to a person like that, we don't know if maybe there's something going on in her life that's oh, causing yeah. her to act this way. And I said that I would feel comfortable going to her and just saying, hey, you know, is there something going on? Like I noticed this or I noticed that. Is that just, you know, having some some dialogue. Hey, Grace, no, that's no. where the great comes in. Oh, yeah. Y'all right here. Y'all right. Anything to add or y'all do different? So, um, we talked about maybe having the office manager go and talk to her first um, and then see, because oftentimes, you know, if a new employee is in a department, they're not going to feel 100% comfortable. So, if there is something that's like going on in her private home mm -hmm. life, then she may not be feel comfortable going to or talking about it to Esteban and Vicky, and it could just kind of light the fire even yeah. more. Mm -hmm. But if you're in kind of that safe area with your manager and you feel more open to saying, "Hey, you know, I'm sorry, my private life is overflowing into my work life quite a bit. Um, you know, I'll practice on working on it." Well, then that may also resolve some tension with Esteban and Vicky or whoever, yeah. because she she'll try to balance it out better, and it may be. Oh yeah, and so it kind of sets the tone a little bit. Yeah. Like if you deal yeah, with, with the with the uh, man, with the uh, office manager being brought in first, kind of yeah, uh, like it kind of sets the tone in terms that there is an issue. Whereas, like I was being funny, but I do believe that's a real common mentality in the workplace. It's like you're not my boss, so mm -hmm. you're not gonna yeah. you don't have the jurisdiction to tell me what I'm doing and how I'm doing. Like I don't care about stability. Like no, yo, that's not your place. You know what I mean? Just being that's a straight yeah. board, like I do, it might not come out that way, yeah. but in the big picture, that is a prominent mindset at the workplace. And I'm, I'm glad that y'all, both of y'all acknowledge that, that there's something we can handle as employee employee relations. But I might need to go holler at somebody too to head in because I, I don't sign the checks, basically. Like, I'm, not, I'm not your boss. But we did agree that, like, if the if it didn't kind of calm the waters, you know, her kind of having an attitude change or separating the home from the work, that then they all probably need to sit down for kind of, mm -hmm. kind of like a team building type of thing, learning how each other kind of works. Oh yeah, that's when you call George Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, bring a little culture morale to the space and place. You know, you know, they say laughter is food for the soul, so I'm gonna make you laugh a little bit. I'm gonna make you think too, though. So, you know, just keep that in mind. You know, I got business cards too, if you want to. You know, but if you have that issue, George Lee's your man. <laughs> this is the slash group right here, the slash group. Coming up, I think here, oh, yeah. it, it was not 
best way to say this, but you just kind of win in the moment, but address it with the supervisors, so that they can correct it. So, I did that purposely. That's why I did the scenario too. I knew y'all would be smart to recognize, like, we don't have the ability to handle all of this. So, what we do is, we got, sometimes we got to ask for help. And these are just also some things, some resources, some people that you can kind of put in your, your lexicon when you think about these steps. We got Bobby Mason. He's the uh, University Equal Opportunity Officer and the Title IX Coordinator. Um, you can find, that, that's his email. You also can find his number. You know, and there might be sometimes you might have to go to that person. Um, we got Kerry Irwin, who is the Employee Relations, and we also have Leora Kirby, who's also in the, uh, uh, she's the Administrator of the Employee Relations. And you know, uh, you might need to also have the contact or know who to contact in your own department if you know, these five strategies of, 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 of conflict management doesn't work, or the three ways of addressing uh, instability doesn't work, you know, there, sometimes you, you have to ask for help. Civility is formal politeness and courtesy in behavior or speech. Another definition to throw at you, kind of ending it, that it's not more, it's, 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 it's more than just speech. Also, behavior and nonverbals also encompass what it means to be uh, civil or incivil. <laughs> Lastly, we gotta bring it back in full circle. We started off with the fraud. We gotta end with the fraud. You know, and into I really do believe that the frog syndrome um, narrative is a good narrative to illustrate how incivility works. So if you think that this workshop is good and you feel like, you know, you can just, this is what I would dump on the employees or my coworkers or my boss, is that at the civility workplace, they talked about the frog syndrome, and it was a good illustration about how the spectrum of civility and incivility work. And basically, as, a, as, a, as an office or as a pot, we want to be mindful or conscious of the temperature that our pot is at. You know, so so so, so simplistically said, including don't be the bullfrog, Joe.